Spoilers ahead, you've been warned. Uh, there's a joke in Deadpool and Wolverine. Deadpool turns to him in the TVA and says, Welcome to the MCU, by the way. <laughs> You're joining at a bit of a low point. And I think that was the most honest of all of Deadpool's self-aware gags throughout the film. So what did I think of the movie? Yeah, it was pretty much exactly what I thought it was going to be. Uh, a multiverse mess, a paper-thin plot, saddled with a lot of clunky exposition as a result of how you know daft the entire concept is. Wolverine is an anchor being in Deadpool's timeline. That's the X-Men universe, Earth-10005. Uh, his death in Logan means that uh, the timeline is basically falling apart and it's going to it's going to cease to exist soon. So Deadpool is offered the opportunity by the character Paradox of the TVA to join the MCU universe instead, which is Earth 616. Uh, Deadpool has he's already been there, having met with Happy Hogan in 2018, and he asked him if he could join the Avengers. He was rejected at the time. So Deadpool travels to several different universes to find a suitable Wolverine who can help him save his universe uh, with some hilarious results and uh, an interesting cameo in there. But soon after retrieving one of the, the Logan Wolverines, they're both sent into the Void, a reality controlled by Cassandra Nova, the evil twin sister of Professor Charles Xavier. It's here where the bulk of the, the cameos take place. So again, more spoilers. You've got Chris Evans in there. For a second, they try to fake you out that he's playing Steve Rogers. But uh, I, could see, I could see the reveal coming that he was actually Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. I mean, you can see his costume kind of underneath his shawl. Also, you've got Wesley Snipes as Blade, Jennifer Garner as Elektra, Channing Tatum as Gambit, uh, Tyler Mayne has a brief cameo as Sabretooth, Daphne Keene, of course, is in there as X-23, and Henry Cavill plays a version of Wolverine from one of the timelines that Wade jumps into. Just very briefly, he has one line. Um, the story is is convoluted, time-bending gibberish, of course, but it's it's mildly entertaining. And of course, what, what does hold the film together is the, the brilliant chemistry between Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. And Jackman's classic Logan pathos and angst, his his brilliant portrayal of the character, I mean, that's, that's the highlight. So he's a version of Logan who let his world down. He was getting drunk at a bar when the humans hunted down and killed the X-Men, and he then went on a rampage thereafter. And by the way, if you were expecting them to not kind of desecrate the legacy of the movie Logan. Think again. The movie opens with Deadpool literally digging up the corpse of Wolverine from the end of Logan, speaking to his skeleton, and using his bones and claws to fight off TVA agents. Yeah, so that wasn't sacred, okay? Now, uh, and, and I'm sure that won't go down too well with some fans. I'm perhaps in the minority here, but I think... The second film was better, uh, the plot was simpler and more personal, and therefore a lot stronger than the messiness of this one. But I do want to be a bit more critical here. Um, the constant sexual innuendo and adolescent smack talk, endless profanity that's characterized Deadpool movies, there's so much more of it than the previous films that it loses any shock factor and becomes kind of tedious after a time as do all of the myriad of, you know, stabbings, shootings, the blood, guts, and gore. It's all kind of tiresome, and to be honest, I was kind of getting bored after the second big Deadpool and Wolverine fight in the car. It's all pointless. They can't kill each other, and you know that they won't. I found the Deadpool and Wolverine versus all of the hundreds of Deadpool variants a bit of a struggle. Uh, I do sound old now, don't I? I mean, I... I <laughs> I, I sound like I, I just don't like the fact that we've become so desensitized to this level of violence, right? I mean, yeah, look, it sounds like I'm a, I'm a bit on my soapbox here, but it, it's 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 not meant to be a moral lecture, but there's something wrong that we're at a point where this level of simulated violence is played for laughs. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. I'm done now, okay? I'm done. Now, speaking of humor, I didn't find this film especially funny. I'm not trying to... It sounds like I'm bashing the movie, doesn't it? I, I don't mean to. It's just... It was okay. Like, it was... It's like, you see the trailers. There's been a lot of them. You've seen the jokes in the trailers, many of them. And that's that's what you're getting for two hours. Right? Aside from 
one or two quips here and there, it's not really a very funny movie. I mean, self-aware fourth wall breaking jokes and references to, you know, continuity and canon, you know, the looks to the camera, they can be clever without necessarily being funny. It's not going to have you laughing out loud all that often, if at all. There is a visual joke that will make some people laugh, which is that one of the Wolverines is, is really short. He's like a mini Wolverine. That kind of works. But the one-liners are kind of lacking. Besides that, as with all multiverse-related superhero movies of late, the film relies a lot on leaning into nostalgia bait. You know, the surprise of the brief cameos as a value add. Um, I was actually surprised that Chris Evans would come back, albeit not as Steve Rogers, like I say. Uh, but there are two other surprises for me. One of them was that that the door is is left open for Wolverine to return again. And also that Professor Xavier, played by Patrick Stewart, doesn't appear in this movie. And I thought for sure that Patrick Stewart would return in, in some sort of cameo. Look, I don't think the film is terrible. It's watchable enough. It, you know, it's okay. That's what I would say. It's okay. I watched the second Deadpool movie more than once. I don't think I would be in a hurry to rewatch Deadpool and Wolverine. Maybe it's because I'm burned out on superhero movies now. Uh, it, it doesn't really feel like a film worth paying to see in the cinema, in my view. But but I'm sure some of you are going to disagree on that point. It, it's okay. It's not saddled with the message, at least. Uh, it's better than Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. It's better than the likes of the Marvels. It's obviously, you know, highly self-deprecating. But this is not the film that rescues the MCU. That's not to say the film isn't going to make a lot of money at the box office. I suspect it will. But Deadpool movies can only ever be a rare thing. You can't sustain an entire franchise on these kinds of self-aware comedies. Having listened back to this review, it does sound like I'm, I'm being a bit of a downer, doesn't it? Sounds like Because, you know, generally the film is being well received. So I'm definitely in the minority in, in my criticisms. Uh, but it feels to me like a popcorn affair. I think that's what it is. I think you might be entertained the first time you watch it. I don't think you're going to be in a hurry to watch it again. It feels like watching... It has the same kind of impact as watching something like a Fast and Furious movie. So it's like a Fast and Furious movie in terms of vibe set in a superhero universe. That's what it feels like to me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Share the video. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.